This is but one of the legends in which people have passed on through generations. Before time began, the world was created from nothing by the three goddesses. Din, the goddess of Pyre, creating the land. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, creating order. Farore, the goddess of courage, creating life. After the goddess's great labor, they created the Triforce, in which they bestowed it to the goddess Hylia. Throughout the ages, the eyes of Demise have sought after the Golden Pyre for their control. When Hylia's forces became too withered, and all hope had been lost as the Hour of Doom was at hand, a hero in green appeared to fight as Hylia's champion as if from nowhere. Fighting with the sacred blade forged by the goddess and using the pyres of the Triforce, the hero was able to repel the Dark One and bring light to the land. The champion was hailed as a hero, and his story was passed down through generations until it became legend. But then came an age where darkness rose once again, only to be slain by the reincarnations of the champion and Hylia. The great evil the hero fought against cursed the future of Hyrule, where the hero and goddess are fated to eternally fight the darkness. Hyrule believed that Hylia and the champion would always protect them from the darkness. But they could not. Faced by the onslaughts of evil, people could do nothing but submit to the evils of their time. From the depths of the Twilight Realm, the surface of the Great Sea, or the plains of the Dark World. Faith seemed to be fading. But what became of these realms? The princess and her hero continue to fight in the name of Hylia to protect the realms from darkness, time, and again. Gaining companions and allies along the way, the heroes and princesses always find a way to vanquish the darkness. And today, while the fight against darkness is at hand, Our legend focuses elsewhere today.
It's the dawn of a new day. Our views pan across like ma the magnificent landscapes of the Elden region of Hyrule. Ravenous mountains on different scales sweeping across the region. You see Hylians on horsebacks uh, fanning themselves to stay cool in the rising heat of the magma. There's magmas burrowing through the ground to gather the treasure from their mining escapades. Some Koroks off in the distance trying to find their long lost friends. Some Zoras debating why the hell they're in a volcanic region where they're just shriveling. <laughs> we see a Rito girl fly overhead and land on a dock uh, in, situated in the lava. A fairy flies across the sky and uh, joins her on the ridge overlooking this giant pool of lava flowing from Dragon Roost Peaks. In the lava is a large, resilient vessel made out of steel. A large Goron with a huge, messy beard, a black cat sporting the Goron crest as a Jolly Roger, and a sleeveless captain's coat. Large, bodacious muscles with fists that resemble the heads of mallets, and a large, boisterous smile, grinning cheek to cheek as he approaches the Rito girl. Are they on their way? The Goron asks. Why, yes, I can see them now. So, one by one, our adventurers are gathering to meet at the port. Andre, would you like to introduce yourself, please? As a player? <laughs> Whatever you want, buddy. <laughs> Player, character. I don't know the custom. AA. <laughs> AA. So I'm I'm Andrew. I'm playing a, a Goron archaeologist named Professor Gabriel Gabsboro. Gabriel's his Hillian name. He, that's the name he goes by as, as a teacher. But you can call him Gabs. Gor uh, Gabs. I, Gabs is trouncing his way towards. Uh, the other Goron and the the small Rito girl. We have also another more flourished Rito making her, making their way. Mai, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, I'm Mai. Uh, I am playing Maisel. Uh, she is a, a canary colored uh, Rito uh, with like some flecks of blue uh, kind of amongst her plumage um, she's basically just recently got her wings and she's hoping to have a bit more of adventures and kind of save some people along the way you know help with the underdogs awesome so you kind of flap and flourish your wings and you reconvene with the rest of the group and uh, magma beard is kind of like all right another another goron another rito who else have we got to join us on our quest? And Medley kind of <sighs> rubs her eye and kind of points towards a dog, kind of like happy tapping its way across uh, <laughs> the mountain with a Korok on their back. She kind of looks to the captain and says, I'm sorry, this is, this is the only person I could find that was willing to help. <laughs> C, would you like to introduce your character? <laughs> Hi, I'm C, and I am going to be playing as Otto, an adorable little Korok with uh, a companion that he uses as a, as a steed called Steed. <laughs> awesome. So uh, the group are now introduced to Captain Magma Beard. Uh, You've probably heard tales of this uh, character throughout the lands. He's a very proud pirate that sails the Magna Seas of Death Mountain. You have all received a letter from this Rito girl called Medley. Uh, she is Lord Valu's caretaker. Uh, she's noticed that Valu has disappeared for quite some time. And it's quite troubling because for other Rito, coming. This is part of their pilgrimage to meet with, with Valu, meet with Medley to, in order to um, basically gain their wings and gain their adolescence to fly. Uh, so with no Valu, it's quite a predicament for the people of Rito Village and Death Mountain in general. Uh, I feel like like Maisel will probably like bound herself in, like just, just kind of like 
So I'm trying to like fluff a bit, just kind of make sure that she's all, you know, still presentable because she's got to kind of, she's representing um, her her people. Um, kind of takes one look at Otto, and just like, uh, okay, a, a, a Korok riding a dog, fair enough. Are you right, wee man? Hi, yeah, I'm good, how are you? Uh, just a little bit befuddled, really. Um, uh, Pleasure to meet you, I'm a, I'm a Oh, uh, hey, okay. hey. This little nub of a, of a paw, I guess. <laughs> My wing basically just like covers you <laughs> as she yeah. just like kind of not, not does like a, you know, those kind of that sort of like handshake sort of thing. She's like, oh yeah, hey, how you doing, pal? Just, I, and as well as try not to knock him off deed at the same time. Maisel, <laughs> pleased to meet you. Right from the village. So, uh, yeah. Magma Beard approaches uh, Gabs. Put her there, brother. Well, I'm glad to have There's you on board. Goro, Goro. Goro, Goro. Go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. I found my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I just hammed mine up a bit more. So I was like, I don't know how she's going to sound. <laughs> Randy, I'm telling you, Randy Savage is my inspiration for this character. <laughs> How you doing, brother? It's been a while since I've seen a real girl and uh, I've been to these parts for a long time. As it happens, I'm around Hillians a lot and they it's odd to be around someone of my size for once. Oh, 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 yes, Goro. They just don't get it, do they? Yeah, these, uh, these cool heads over here don't know how to handle the real heat. Ho, 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 ho. Goro, Goro. Oh, indeed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and the doors. Oh. The doors. <laughs> so small. You know, Doc, you gotta like, pull your belly in. Let, when we get up to the seas, we can show them how to really rock and roll. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Um, Natalie approaches, uh, Maisel. I'm so glad that you were able to respond to the letter. Honestly, like, knowing that an Orito that's been through the whole pilgrimage, you know how important this is to find Lord Valu. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, it was a wee bit hard for me to do it the first time round, but got there in the end, and I feel like every other fledgling needs to get their wings. It's like... I feel like the others don't really get it, you know? Like, they get what they get, and then we have to work for it. Well, at least we actually work for it, you know? So. Oh, he- I mean, we're not supposed to judge one's journey. We're just supposed to be able to guide each other along the way. And I hope with Felu's blessing, you're able to uh, help help the Goron and the, the Korok find their way. I... Mm. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on them. I mean, one will be a bit harder to watch, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Otto, you notice a little fairy kind of zip, zap, zap, and kind of flutter around. Hello! Hi! Hi! A creature from the forest! Uh, how nice to meet you! Yeah! Can you can you stay still for a second? <laughs> <laughs> My head is feeling, and you see little stars. <laughs> like, oh heavens! That's not good. Are you are you sure you're up to the task, little guy? Oh, I'll be fine. I have my my loyal steed with me. Steed, say hi. <laughs> steed, <oof. laughs> oh my god! All right. Okay. Well, uh, you do realize we're in a volcano, right? You might burn to death. Oh. Uh, well, huh. No, I did not think about that. Actually, what was in that letter? I actually can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Madeline overhears this and she's like, <laughs> Wait, wait, you don't know how. Then how did you know how to get to Death Mountain? 
It was in the letter. I asked some guy on the street and he told me to come here, but he didn't say what. That's all he said. So as I was saying to uh, uh, this lovely uh, Canary Rito, I thank you all for coming here. Uh, Lord Valu has been has disappeared. He never leaves his perch unless it's something incredibly dangerous. There's some speculation that there could be some greater evil in the depths of Death Mountain, and I've recruited you all to help, uh, along with the help of uh, Captain Magma Beard here. I'm sorry I cannot join you folks on this journey. I have to prepare the altar for when fully returns, but Magma Beard knows everything about these mountains. He knows them inside and out, and he knows the mission. Yes, it's true. With Captain Magma Beard here, you guys won't be led astray one single bit. I've fought all sorts of foes across the land. There's this one time I was in the deserts. There was a Lionel on my right. Maldugo was on my left. I was tangling them with my fists. I was punching the Lionels. I was strangling the Maldugo. But unfortunately, it got me in its jowls. It swallowed me whole. And I was thinking my ship had sunk. Until I gathered all my Goro strength and punched a hole straight through that thing's belly. And I punched a hole through that Lionel and I rode myself all the way back to Death Mountain. They've never seen it coming. Thank you, thank you. This, no autographs this, this time. Through this whole story, Maisel's just like... <laughs> yes, 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 I know. I'm incredible. But no autographs at this time. As we d- embarked on... And he, like, gestures towards uh, the ship. Uh, uh, yeah. So he gestures towards the ship, and he says, This is a creation of pure beauty. It was passed down to me and my brothers from my father, and from his father, and his father, and his father. We are sailing on the Daruk's Ruby. It's a powerful vessel, able to sail across lava, magma, and we can conquer Death Mountain. Not conquer, save it. That is the important part of the mission. It's already conquered as far as I know. The less everyone else knows, the better. So, will I burn? <laughs> so, luckily, we've also because because of the different kind of folks that we were trying to recruit. Uh, we kn- we know that not everybody can withstand the heats of the depths of uh, Death Mountain. So we've got in contact with some merchants to meet you guys and best equip you guys for your journey um and like Melly kind of flaps up in the air to kind of like kind of scout out where they are and she points just to the just to the east of the ship she's like oh they've just set up camp uh if you folks want to she like flies back down if you guys want to take a journey over and get yourselves well equipped then that would be greatly appreciated uh well I mean I'm sure there's a merchant there that can sell some potions to survive against the heat. There's an odd looking merchant with a lot of masks. There's a guy with a weird hood. You'll 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 see what I mean. Uh, uh, thank you. Sounds good to me. Are we getting on? Let's do this. Oh uh, one question, Bradley, before we go. Um, any any clues about Valu's disappearance? Any inclinations about why maybe he was missing? What, any behavior, odd behaviors the last time you saw him? So the only the only implication was that he never leaves the perch unless there's a greater disturbance within the volcano we've no I haven't been able to track anything down it's 
some might say it's like a divine sense of the loose. Um, I'm sorry, I, that's that's all the information I could provide. Although, rumor has it that our very rare, incredible ore is in the depths of Death Mountain. Oh, that was my next question, actually. <laughs> oh, s- Professor, you're familiar with? Well, of course, I, you're Gorn. One reason I accepted this mission is I, I'm, I've heard this ore uh, many times throughout history and uh, it has had, uh, hasn't popped up in any specific location until now. So I've heard rumor that it was here and I intend on mm, killing two birds with one stone, sorry, so to speak. <laughs> the two birds immediately like look at yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stone, like... <laughs> 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 Maisel just steps well away. <laughs> Off the red start. Term. <laughs> Is this something that um, Maisel would have been privy to? Like, the information about what kind of gems they are? Do you think that's something that we pass down from Rito Dorito? I almost sounded like I said Dorito. <laughs> <laughs> Dorito. <laughs> Dorito. Uh, My the first rule of the game. Could you give me a let's say this would be like a history check. There isn't necessarily one here, but uh, mm-hmm. let's flavor it for like academics or arcana. Um, or if, I have if, neither. <laughs> then give me a wisdom rule. Okay. Uh, well, I don't have any plus anything on my wisdom, but I have the then only we, things I have selected in there is crafting, perception, and sense moves. So that would just be a straight roll then. Straight, straight uh, roll with the two d six. Oh, uh, a five and a one. So six so in six. total. Um, so that's with the cost, or is that failed? And... I would say. It's it's Death Mountain. There's volcanoes and mines everywhere. Like, and all the rare ore could just be an, a diamond or a ruby. There's this shiny stuff there, of course. Hey, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. What have actually? Uh, what have I actually heard about it this war? Um. Give me an uh, give me an ap- academics check yourself. Nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, so three ancient Hylian texts. Uh, you've been able to kind of through receiving this letter and like your journey up until getting here, you've been kind of looking through texts and you've kind of heard time manipulation. But th- those are well lost to time itself. Like being so able to f- being able to find a-, a stone capable of manipulating time. That's just not. It's not possible in this age. But you know, weirder things happen in Hyrule. So, what's probably the best plan of action? How's the best way of getting there? Do you reckon? <coughs> we know E One's got his own his own ride. So. It kind of gestures to Otto. So, uh, <laughs> once everyone gets stocked up with the merchants, we'll set sail on the ruby. We'll go to Dragon Roost Peaks. At the very base of the mountain, there's a tunnel. We'll sail through the tunnel. There's almost like an altar where we can park ourselves up. We'll get off there. We'll dive deeper into the cavern and just see what's there, see if we find Valu. Sounds good Sounds enough great. for me. Now, which shop are we going to first? Which, uh, is, it, is it walking distance? The masks? Oh yeah, it, it, the uh, the little camp, it's, it's literally not too far, it's just like over the ridge, almost. You guys are approaching the merchants. Uh, as per the description from 
medley, you come across a strange merchant in a bunny mask. Uh, so he's got a he's got like a weird bunny mask with a, a blue blue and navy scarf that kind of comes down to c- 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 comes down to the ground. He's got purple robes. It's odd. It doesn't look like he has a like a backpack like the other two, but he seems like a merchant, I guess. Uh, next, we see a very sinister looking, but very deceptively charming salesman with a bunch of masks on his bag. Uh, he's rubbing his hands together. He's a merchant. He's very happy to be getting a customer. And he's just like rubbing his hands and like he's almost like beckoning you guys to come come closer. Lastly, and my personal favorite, you see a very uh, proud member of the, <laughs> of the LGBTQ plus community. A very awkward lad. Beetle! So yeah, Sorry, you see, I love Beetle. So you see uh, Beetle walking across. Well, he's like setting up his bag. He's got uh, a funny bowl cut, a nose way too long for his face, really bad acne. Uh, his backpack looks like a big giant beetle. And like I say... He's got a very proud uh, pin for the LGBTQ plus uh, community and other stripes. Uh, his crop top is way too low because his nips are right, and his booty shorts are way too revealing. <laughs> oh, I knew there was a reason why I loved him. <laughs> because Beetle's an ally, that's why. <laughs> yeah. You notice the red-headed merchant with all the masks kind of like like shuffled forward past everybody else and he's just like hello hello welcome come come travelers we've got loads of wares to sell you today how are we doing great passed off uh a little bit affronted to be honest you're a little bit eager oh it's just because we've got excellent wares to sell you my dear now how can i help a retail like you today uh, what do you sell, pal? Whew, well, I'm an ex- I'm an enthusiast of all masks. I like to collect them. I like to show them off. But do you know that masks have a powerful effect on the wielder of the mask? Well, I can imagine. But do you have any masks that will, you know, fit my schnozzle? Form fitting, my dear. Oh, you, you can wear them like a hat. You can wear them however you want. The mask fits to you. And let me tell you, it appears Lord Valu has been met with a terrible fate. But let that be no persuader from you buying my excellent wares. Okay. Are we allowed to quickly try before we buy? Why, um. yes. <laughs> so he he shows you what he has on his uh, pack. Uh, he has a, like a little hairband with like bunny ears and like little eyes. He's presenting the bunny hood. 30 rupees. It triples your speed. Uh, let me go through all the shops before you guys just be like, I want to get this. No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> I'm window shopping, pal. That's uh, what I'm doing. <laughs> he shows off a purple mask with like hollow eyes and a crooked smile. Uh, it's the stone mask for 30 rupees and so long as you don't move enemies can't see you uh he presents a mask with a skull and crossbones uh it's worth 50 rupees and it's the bomb mask it creates a two by two explosion in front of you uh once you move uh, once you perform the action you can no longer move so you can i you can't move until the end of your turn so you can either move use the action and then you can't move anymore or you can use it at the beginning of your action and just not move at all lastly worth a whopping 164 rupees is the plumber mask uh this mask turns the user into an italian plumber with a red hat jumping distance is doubled the main attack is a stump with your feet or a butt bash uh they deal different damage 14 rupees down (laughs) Uh, if, if you take damage wearing the mask, you shrink a size. Take another hit with the mask and it falls off and you can't use it until you have a sh- long rest. Oh, man. We, we could pull our rupees in like that. <laughs> so, <Parrot? laughs> take turns. 
So yeah. the uh, the purple hooded bunny man like pushes the happy mask salesman out of the way, and he's like, "Well, don't put all your eggs in one basket, folks. My name is Ravio, and I am a great weapon renter. You can get any weapons or tools you like from myself. If there's anything you need, Ravio has it. I've got them from all across the land, so you don't need to worry." Uh, I've got hook shots, I've got fire rods, I've got bows, I've got swords, I've got shields, all of it. Say it, that baby is yours. You notice I Ravio have doesn't have a pack, so... <laughs> Where is he pulling this I up imagine, from? I imagine, like, whilst, like, Ravio is um, basically just, like, going, spieling off, like, the, you know, the weapons and everything, and as soon as, as, soon as he says bows, you know... <laughs> Maisel's just gonna grab and be like, show me the bows, show me the bows. Right you are, my dear. So he, uh, he puts his hands underneath his hood. Um, he whistles. And you see like a little bird, kind of like, like almost like supersonic speed, kind of flying with like a bow. But the bow has like a little bunny, uh, you know, like where you put, like, put the arrow on to the shit it? It's got like little bunny ears. I can rent this both to you for a measly little 40 rupees with a quiver fully stocked with arrows. Normal arrows. You can attach stuff to them yourself. That is an extra cost for me. <laughs> Um, is there insurance with it? Do I, like, what if I break it or lose it? Is there, like, a collateral I have to do? If you die, Spiro will just get it back. How will he know where you die? It's a secret to everybody. Uh, okay. Aye, I'll take it. About time I got a bloody bow and arrow. Okay, so uh, the little bird kind of flies over to you and like gives you the bow, gives you a quiver stocked with arrows. We're not tracking Amumai, so don't worry about Thank it. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I don't want to have a Tears of the Kingdom situation here. Uh, so that's 40, yeah? 40 rips, yeah. I also got 110 left. Uh, so lastly, uh, like while the Happy Mask Salesman and Ravio are very confident, like Beetle kind of goes, Hi! Uh, I'm, I'm a salesman too. Um, I've got potions and bomb bags and pears and any other random gear or ingredients that you guys think you'll need for your journey. Uh, how much is the bomb bag? Uh, he takes out the bomb bag and it, like, he's like, kind of like carefully like shaking and holding it. He's just like, it's a uh, 40 rupees. It can carry 20. I give 30. <laughs> Oh, you drive a hard bargain. Uh, roll me a... What's the check in this game? Uh, influence, I think. Roll influence for me. Nine. Okay, I'm going to roll to see if... Uh, yeah, let's go sense motive, I guess. I have a plus two. You know what? He rolled a he rolled a ten. You got a plus two on that, so that's technically eleven. So you beat him. So oh no, nine is my plus two. Actually. Oh okay. Uh, nice. He's looking at you. You're a big. You're a big Goron. You're a prof your professor, but he's just like oh, thirty five. I don't give. I don't give you five bomb chews. You better deal. So, beetle. Obviously, like, scamping out on himself. Uh, he gives you the <laughs> bomb bag with some bomb cheese on it. I would take a 35, but that's cool. Um, Otto is still distracted by the happy sa uh, mask salesman. Uh, how and why are you teleporting on the same spot? It seems like you're moving like, and then you're, you're doing different movements all of a sudden. Weird. He kind of he kind of looks at the, uh, Otto. Say, you are wearing quite a wonderful little mask, aren't you, Korok? Yeah. Do you have something like this? Not quite. Although, and he kind of looks at you like he kind of turns his head upside down. The shape reminds oh. me of a mask I'm longing to find. 
like, oh, must be a lovely mask then. Why, yes, I am looking for quite an extraordinary mask with unfathomable power. Some might say it's been lost to time, but I'll find it. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Oh, well, good luck. Uh, Do you have anything to help me not burn? Ooh. It appears I am all out of fire resistance masks. If you ask my friend Beetle over there, he will certainly have something that can keep you cool. Oh, okay. Thank you. He's comfort's over. <laughs> uh, Beetle is like, he, he's just handed over the bomb bag with like all the bomb chews. Uh, hello? Would you like something? Uh, yeah, something to not burn. Scampers through his uh, bag for a little bit. He, <laughs> he pulls out a sex pack of like potions. Uh, he, he hands oh. it over. Uh, so that'll do you. It's only three of you, so you don't need that many. And you don't need pointing the gaps. Uh, and you don't need one. Unless you You're want it for the small guy. Uh, unless you want it for the flavor. It's not my taste. All right. Because it's Ruby. No, it's, uh, it's not Ruby. <laughs> ah, fine. Give it to the little guy. Uh, he, he puts like two jars on the grind. Uh, 40 rupees for two. Oh. Uh, do I need to? <laughs> you can do better than that. Come on. I'm trying to. Be nice to the little guy. He's only we. I'll huggle for him. Oh, <laughs> oh, the pressure. I'm sure my grandfather and his grandfather before that were dealing with these hagglers. Fine. 30. 30 for two. I, 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 do I? Fine. And I'll give you a blue potion for the dog. Final offer for 30 rupees. What is that to? It restores. Stores one to eight of hearts and one d four of uh, MP together. Ooh, nice. Uh, okay, thank you. I, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Take take put some in his little wallet. Um, Steed, can you pay the guy? Hi, does Steed pay the guy? Where where's Steed's wallet? <laughs> so, um. Otto is one of those corks from Breath of the Wild or Tears of the No, it's from Tears of the Kingdom that has the big backpack. But in order, in order to move, he gave the backpack to Steed. So the rupees are all in there. Steed just kind of shakes it off uh, on the ground and scarpers around it to find the rupees, uh, p- puts them in his mouth and then slobbers them over. It's just like all messy, all. Uh, um. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Goodbye. <laughs> as as my grandfather always told me to say to adventurers, it's dangerous to go alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey. And now with all the three merchants providing you some kind of insight, giving you at least one iconic Zelda quote each, what do you guys want to do next? Uh, I don't want to spend the rest of my rupees, actually. So yeah. They, <laughs> Go on. I still have five left, so. Oh, um, uh, I'll pop over to Ravio. Yep. I'm looking for a... Hey there, friend. I'm looking for a uh, better hammer than this little thing, and I'll hold up my, my mallet. It's like size of my hand. Ooh. Bring on a bigger one. A girl like yourself using a tiny little nutcracker like that? 
Uh, it's for archaeology. That won't do. That won't do. No, not at all. He calls uh, uh, Shiro, uh, the bird, looks at the hammer, flies off again, comes back. I'm like, there's a really nice ornate hammer. Uh, it's kind of got like metal plating around like the front of it. Uh, it's almost got like like skull patterns like in the eye on like the top of it. How about a skull hammer? Slight better upgrade. Mm. I'd say. How much? Ooh. How much indeed? Because an upgrade is more than a rental in my books. So let's say 50 rupees? 40 and a trade up from this little guy. <laughs> if it's you, it's good size. It does indeed. It's, I mean, like I say, it's a nutcracker, and there's plenty of nuts in, around these parts. Oh, oh, oh. You'll find many red hammers. Mm hmm. Tell me, you're, you're an educated man. Indeed. And he kind of like nudges a little bit closer, and he's like, Are there any portals back to Low Rule lately? I know. I haven't heard of any. Rats. Well. In a hundred years or so. <laughs> hmm. Rats. Should you find out any, sir? 30 rupees. You let me know. Deal? Indeed. Shakes your hand. I this grab his whole arm. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to squeeze too hard. <laughs> 30 rupees. Yeah, so he... Oh, uh, here's, here's yours. Thank you. Yeah, he uh, he gives it to Shiro. Shiro flies off of it. Uh, you know, I have a skull armor. Yeah, how much damage does it do? Yeah, I forgot to ask about my bow and arrow as well. Uh, stand D8. Standard bow. If you go to the weapon section of the guidebook, it's, um, on, it's on Discord, isn't it? Because I, I, I've got every time I tab out, it goes funny. Okay. Recording. Um, let's see a bow. Weapons. No, 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 no. A bow. Uh, a bow that deals one d four heart piercing damage. Requires two hands, but in your case, your talents. Feet. Yep, feet. <laughs> um, cool. This. So it's the same as my. It's the same as my magic boomerang then. Yeah. Cool. The skull hammer is quite OP. Uh, oh. I I Feel dress. Free to, like go down a. Go down oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the one in the guidebook is 100 rupees for uh, 1d8 of heart damage. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. It's a one shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100. Yeah, Ravi will give you a super death point. <laughs> Ravi's deals are through the roof. It's a clearance. He's liquidating his, um, <laughs> his business at the moment. <laughs> Well, while we're here, I want to do an insight check on why he wants to get back. Or wants mm. to get to the low roll. I assume he's going back. Yep. I don't really have a facility for that. Here's just 2d6. <laughs> Three. <laughs> you're not picking up anything <laughs> like this. You're, no. more, you're more like... Is that mask... Like... Does he have a mouth under that mask? No. <laughs> but he's got people hands. But he looks like a bunny. No. That's fine. It's not like he looks like somebody important from Hyrule or anything, just with different hair. <laughs> no. It's weird. Anybody else? 
How much did you see the um, the bomb mask was from the mask salesman? Was it 50? Uh, I believe it was 50. 50, 50 yep. Do you reckon... Uh, I know that I know that you mentioned that you know it could be an area bomber effect, but does that have like a timer? Or are I able to move out of the way, sort of thing, with it? Um, um, can I can I activate it in the sky? <laughs> so because of like the recoil from like the blast coming from your face, uh, I would say, hmm. If you're in the air, it would push you back. But, and to kind of steady yourself, it would kind of like take your entire movement to kind of like stabilize yourself. If it was like, if you were on the ground, because the blast is that strong, like you're kind of like using your full strength to kind of like stay steady. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got rupees burning in my pocket. Um, <laughs> it's a one shot. So when are you going to spend them again? <laughs> Exactly, I got another 110 to use. So um, I'm gonna. So Maisel's gonna like just tentatively move up to the creepy uh, mask salesman. Like, so uh, you were blabbing about masks earlier. Any chance you still uh, bomb one? Hi. He like takes off his bag. And you kind of hear him, like, kind of whistling, like, a, a melody for, that sounds very soothing, but eerily creepy as well. As he, like, lifts off the ball bag and presents it to you, and, like, kind of looks at your, like, face shape, and he's like, hmm, how's the best way? And well, you said I could put it anywhere. I could put it as a pauldron for a wee while. So I don't know. So it's kind of like he's like, he's kind of like doing like Taylor style where he's just like okay mm. like he's like measure like measuring it up and stuff and he kind of takes it and kind of like almost makes it like a, like a beak shield so like you can just like yeah. pop it over like that like a, like, like a half helmet like a cap yeah like a cap like a mask in the, yeah yeah so he get, he gives it to you and it's kind of like you're able to like slot it on and it, it, it fits your face bomb mask yeah bomb mask. I like explosions. Uh, sweet. And that was 50 rupees, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Cool, cool. Maths. That makes it 60. Um, left. I also mentioned Beetle is selling, like, red potions, green potions, uh, miscellaneous gear. So, like, I haven't looked up what they do, but I presume it's, like, the games. But, like, uh, Deku nuts, uh, Deku sticks, like whatever you guys think you'll need because if you're a D&D &D player like me I'll buy like mm -hmm. like caltrops and weird shit just be like you'll never know when they come in handy <laughs> um, well I'm definitely gonna go yeah, with Weasel was... oh sorry you can go first if you like yeah I was adding is I'm assuming he has the little table that he does I was eyeing all of those things and um, so what did you do Gesturing to what? <laughs> uh, just in general, like the caltrops, maybe the deku, deku nuts. So he uh, shows a deku nut to you, and he says that they effectively act as like a flashbang. Uh, he also tells you if you're familiar with uh, dazzle fruit, they do the same thing. It, cr it causes a flash, and it'll give. The mechanically, it'll give like the monsters like disadvantage. Like they'll be swinging and missing, kind of. So effectively, mm -hmm. you'll get no costs if you're able to like get out of there. Um, um, okay. Uh, how much do they do they cost? Because it's like literally de like acorns. He's just gonna roll them across and be like ah, five rupees. Okay. Uh, um, I'll take some of those cantrips as well. So yeah, those just the piercing damage to anything that steps on it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, f f five rupees as well. All right. Thank you so much. So Maisel's been like just eyeing over uh, Little Otto's shoulder. 
that it's hard. Um, at Beadle's little, uh, like little carry case sort of thing. Um, does, all right, pal, do you have any uh, thing I can make things into? Have you got ingredients and things like that? You just got a bit of everything. I'm not going to do the voice anymore because it's uh, between that and It's so beard. much fun. It's so much fun. And then Magma Beard, <laughs> my voice is going to be in shreds. Uh, he is gonna just uh, kind of like show you like an assortment of like random stuff, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever like weird thing you're looking for, it's it's there. So you name it, it's there. Any like bugs and lizards and stuff to kind of, or anything to attach to my to my arrows. I know you mentioned dazzle fruit, but anything that might be able to up uh, damage potentially, because I got crafted. Yeah, uh, let's say he's able to give you like three, three like, uh, the coblin horns. So three of your shots can do like an extra heart of damage. So each shot, so, uh, one plus, one plus heart, yeah? Yeah. Cool. DMG. All right. How much is that going to set me back then? Uh, 15. Wow. You're cheap. Can I take it? Can I get Can I grab a few? Can I get like 30 rupees worth? Let's say that's all or, he has. Ah, oh, oh, damn it. All right. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll, I'll grab those three. And uh, how much are your healing potions? His healing potions are 20 rupees. So, how much was the 15 for the uh, jobbies? Yeah, 15, um, 15 for the horns and 20 for the red potion. Oh, let me just quickly check that my brain isn't just doing a massive guff. The red, uh, the red potion heals for 1d4. Sorry, 1d6 okay. hearts. Uh, how many has he got in stock? How many can you afford? <laughs> I can afford two. Then you, you can get two. Cool. Uh, so I have 25. Wait, no, I don't. I've got 25 gold left. I've got five gold left. Jesus, Myra. I this spent is why I, it I, all. This is why I failed maths at school. <laughs> I spent it all on gambling. <laughs> on the gambling. So two healing potions. Brilliant. Is that the same um, as healing poultice? Uh, are you looking for the guide there? No, it's because I have a healing poultice in my, uh, whatchamacallit, in my, uh, supplies? Yeah, I've got oh, healing poultice, poultice in my supplies. Heals D4 at rest. Ah, so only when we're resting. Cool, that's fine. Um, I'm guessing you can use the healing potions during combat or out in field. Yeah, so it's, oh. uh... It's on page 47 of the guide. Uh, it's like the first potion, healing potion. Trying to restore hearts. Oh. Where did um, the mask step in? Sorry, uh, I have to keep going. It's all good. Uh, it's my fault for making a very long shopping segment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Mai just, bought, Mai just bought the bomb mask. Uh, there's a bunny hood and the stone mask. And then the plumber mask at 164. Mm. Um, so I think I'll buy the bunny hood and put it on steed <laughs> that's 30 yeah, rupees it's... please oh, dear god 30? this is gonna look so the barbie art of this oh. <laughs> <Barbie Pat. laughs> did you say 30 or 40 uh, 3 zero. 3 okay and that triples steed's speed <laughs> Are the items um, in the rule book? Sorry, or are they in the ace guide? Uh, they're all in the rule book. Uh, the only one that isn't oh. is the bomb mask. I think that's the only one that I homebrewed. Uh, that's fine. Everything else I'll, that you guys have bought is in the guide. I'll likely use it, but I'll be like, how do I use it again? I know it's an area of effect sort of thing, but um, that's cool because I'm just opening the guide now so I've got proper information written down. Okay, so... Um, Can you say triple or double? Triple. 
Come on. Okay, it heard great. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, Bloody hell. That's from the rule book. <laughs> if it's broken as fuck, blame Andrew. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot broken in here. Best. Uh, I, I do have. Uh, I have 25 left, so I guess I'll. I just grab like something quick. Yep. Like uh, if there's a. <laughs> do they any of them have a, the Goron drill belt? <sighs> that's the. That's a, the suggestive drilling thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, they don't. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Then I grab a, uh, uh, a healing potion. How much is that? 20? Uh, 20 yeah. rupees, yeah. And maybe a crowbar, if that can be five groups. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's go. Smash and crash to your heart's delight, but don't get caught. <laughs> uh, Magma Beard is like kind of beckoning you guys to come back to the ship. Uh, as you guys make your way, Medley has already like flown off to go to Dragon Roost Peaks to await the Feliz return. And uh, Asi kind of flies around and is there to assist you guys should you need any help. Magma Beard uh, walks ap- across the gangplank gets himself onto the ship. Yep, gets himself on the ship and takes his place. What do you guys do? My coracle away. Um, no. The back to the other friends. Goings with Kirby and Blathers. Um, so we're, we haven't got on the ship, but we're just getting on the ship. Okay. Magma um, just w- went to go like do fi- like final preparations before setting sail. Ah, all right. Uh, Maisel's just gonna gonna have a wee like look around, just kind of. Can I check if there's any? Um, I mean, more like like a perception check sort of thing. Yep. Um, just to see if there's any like nefarious things potentially gonna get in the way of us leaving. Yeah, I think what that would be. Yeah, uh, are are you suspicious of magma beard, or are you suspicious of like the environment? The environment. I trust him. He's a big boy. It's all good. Yeah, he, he's he's the he's a big, <laughs> big cobble, good boy. He's a big good boy. Uh, in that case, you can do either perception or survival, whichever one is better. Okay. Let me have a lucky cookie. That is. Well, I have perception, so <laughs> let's do that. But it's just two rolling two d sixes, uh, and then add the yeah. then add the plus, I believe. Okay. Oh, sorry, just drop that. Four. Four. Yeah, I'm not rolling well tonight. I'm changing one of my dice. Uh, it's a volcano. That's as nefarious as it gets. <laughs> Bit too hot in this place. I'll yep. tell you that. You're. So as a Rito, uh, long, I mean, Rito are supposed to do this uh, pilgrimage and dive in, uh, but you're from what I assume is a colder climate. So like your plumage yeah, is just too thick, sort of thing. Ver- very heavy. So like you've you've survived in this in this region. You don't like it, but it's just me. <laughs> Yeah, Myra doesn't like the heat either. <laughs> I'll get on with it. Uh, Otto, uh. how are you looking, bud? Yeah, I think I'm. <laughs> um, having put the 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 bunny ears on the dog, I'm just zooming everywhere. Oh, this is fun! And I I think as soon as I get uh, there. Um, it's, it's gonna do the the smoke thing, I think. You're and you're not catching fire because of the environment. You're catching fire because uh, Steed is moving too goddamn fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, t- t- okay, okay, buddy, calm down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I think I I will get on on the ship. Cool. Just wait for everybody. 
Alrighty, if everybody boards the ship. Um, so, usually, when you're on board a ship, you generally feel the cool sea breeze coming from the water that's refreshing as you sail across the ocean. Not the ship. You feel the heat rising from the lava below as the ship cuts through the molten hot waves. Uh, it's surprising at first how you're able to withstand uh, stand, just even standing on the ship because it's metal. Metal retains heat. It's a volcano. It's the hottest thing ever. So like, yeah, it's a miracle. You see uh, magma beer like almost like bare hands, like lift up like the anchor and kind of like get it ready. You see him like like almost like pull a cord and like the sail unfurls and he like grabs the wheel and he like the ship just starts going and he's got his hands on the thing uh, on the wheel uh you look across the entire deck uh there's a giant catapult styled cannon with a very un unique uh mechanism to launch the ammunition so as he's sailing along he kind of like looks towards uh every one of you so uh my hands are going to be tied here. That's wrecking my voice. <clears throat> my hands are pretty tied here. Uh, I do have some jobs for you guys to do in order to keep the ship looking fresh while we're sailing along. What did you have in mind? So something I think I forgot to mention is when you guys were going onto the ship, not only does it have a, have a big mast with a sail, uh, it's also got... It's also got um, like a rudder system, like built into like the two sides of its hull. So mm -hmm. he explains that because of like the heat waves rising, like that can mess with like the air currents with the sail. So sometimes he uses that to effectively like sail the ship through the lava. But as it as that happens, sometimes uh, Choo Choo Jelly occasionally gets stuck in the rudders of the ship. He'll need someone to unclog that. Secondly, uh, Soot and Ash is covered over the entire deck just from it com coming down like rain. He needs someone to clean it and swab the deck. Lastly, the captain's a little bit more shy about asking for this one, but he's he gets hungry while he sails, so he would like someone to cook some food. The deck is incredibly hot, so anything... Let's pretend you guys have like ingredients with you. Uh, the deck is incredibly hot. If you crack an egg, it's probably going to fry itself. So there's an oven. Everything's there. So jobs one, two, and three. Tell me who's tackling what and what skill you would like to use or what item or what thing. Maisel. Like... I'd like to swab the deck, please, but I've got um, other means of trying to, you know, get rid of the soot and the gus. The, the, not the gus. Ah, oh, I gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to use gus to just kind of like flap all of the soot away as hopefully not making it a cloud. Oh, no, I'm going to make a cloud, aren't I? So um, do, you, do you remember how you use gus? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Gust is like two, let me just have a double check. So, it's two spaces. So, oh, to, no, to I don't know what I'll do instead. I don't know what I'll do instead. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, I'd like to use my Gust jar instead. Considering it's tiny little particles, I'm going to use that to suck all the, the ash in and then shoot it out over the side of the deck. Okay. Because uh, I know that using Gust is only two spaces, so at least I can go... Or keep it anyway for maybe another time. Awesome. So, so that's the description uh, of what. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, uh, yeah. no, just I want to give some a little bit more flavor to this. So, uh, as my, uh, as Maisel is uh, using the gas jar to clean the ship, I think uh, I'm gonna. I didn't know this, and I'm gonna accidentally be in the way and be sucked in. <laughs> oh. Just hoovering up. I'm just like, it's got clogged. Like, what? what's that noise I'm hearing? Uh, I'm guessing it's like an hoover. You're going to hear like, oh no, help me. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, nope. so we've got the description of what uh, 
make make an argument out of any of the skills of which you think applies the best. Tell me how it works, okay. and I'll, I'll I'll see how it does. What for using my gust jar? So you're using your gust jar. You're, tr- I mean, <laughs> I I mean I, I would imagine her being quite like pernickety about it, like getting all the nooks and crannies. So maybe Dex. Because she's being very, like, yep. dexterous about it. Let's like, go with dexterity. Uh, so, do you have a plus on that? Uh, I have a plus two. Plus two? Because it's courage. I, so, um, add a plus two to your uh, your vacuuming. She's very courageous. I mean, cleaning is a very scary thing to do. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, pet uh, 11, 12. Great. Success. So you're just, uh, you've got the jar, you're sucking everything in, you're blasting out over the edge. It's very therapeutic. Uh, You're just like puffing out like these uh, uh, dust clouds of uh, soot and ash. Just. Uh, Suddenly, as you're uh, getting the last little batch, uh, see, give me a reflexes check. Okay. This is the jar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a seven. So, uh, Otto is like just basically like a a horse jockey, just um, like you're you're just in laps around the entire ship. Uh, <laughs> Otto bounces off and like rolls aside and like Seed uh, Steed is like you ever see when like you're walking a dog and like they lay, lay down and you have to drag them a little bit like mm. that's him <laughs> slowly going towards the jar as like Maisel is like wonderfully being like I'm doing the best job in the world and like she's so well you were <laughs> she's got the jar in her talons and she's like flapping around so she's not even Fully, she she's not fully aware that she's like sucking up your dog. Wow, what a <laughs> phrase! Uh, so yeah, you, you see you see the dog basically like, pause, like kind of like, getting dragged towards this ghost jar. Uh, oh, no. oh please. Uh, stop! I I go in front of it and <laughs> sacrifice myself <laughs> and get <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> yes, stop it! <laughs> and I want to clog the the gas jar with your big booty. <laughs> okay. Uh... I can already tell this is gonna be more than one session. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't even know what like, like what what skill check is that? <laughs> uh, it could be um, uh, acrobat- acrobatics. Reflex- Do you want to? You want to? Sure, like it is very dramatic. So per- give me a performance. <laughs> right, that's um ten. Right? Oh yeah, that's a success. Three successfully. Oscar winning. <laughs> yeah, so like, uh, you dive. Even at the Epona Awards. And like, <laughs> Professor Gabs, like you, you're convinced that like some time manipulation is under effect because Otto moves in slow motion as he like <laughs> in bullet time like gets like in the way of like the vortex of the gust uh, jar and is slowly like sucked into the jar and clogs it. Uh, Maisel, you feel like the recoil and you're like, why is this suddenly a lot heavier? Not a as good I job clog- of this. This place was dirty. You can eat off the as deck. I clog it. As I clog it, I do the little noise that corks do when you throw a rock on them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, so seeing this, I come up with my uh, my crowbar and try to like <laughs> pry him out, just gently. I'm assuming that Maisel's completely oblivious to this. So seeing a massive <laughs> Goran coming up to her with a crowbar, oh, trying oh, to like rip apart her beloved 
ghost jar. Like this, this to her is like her, like her Dyson hand, like vacuum. But oh, to fuck. her, like so, it's like it's her baby. Like no, you get your own. Like you go break your own ghost jar, you big bully. Or you could break your your teamwork here, your allies. What? And then just Look. I'm. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> okay, let me turn it off. <laughs> off. Get off. Get off. Okay, uh, that is one job completed. <laughs> um, it's like how many how many people does it take to screw in a light bulb? Clearly three here in this case. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, you know what? A job for each of them. They'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, and then and then no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so the chew jelly stuck in the rudders of the ship, and then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What? Pardon me. Sorry. So magma. I got. I have uh, resistance resistance to heat and fire, so I'm gonna climb down there. Okay. Uh, Actually, I'm a good climber too. That's the one I was literally about to ask. Can you give me a climb check just to see, like, how well you can hold on there? Nice. It's eight plus two, ten. Awesome. So like, no problem at all. Like you're able to like swing off, the, swing off like the edge of the ship, and kind of like get yourself down. Um, oh, but how? Mm. So is it like looks like it's really stuck on? It's just kind of it's just kind of gunky. It's not like the rudders aren't able to move. Uh, mm. Yeah, it just it looks like it's just clogging up. Is he basically doing an oil change then? <laughs> Effectively. <laughs> well, I don't want to get my new hammer dirty, but I think I'll try. Let's see, I have some stuff. I have a shovel, so I can try scraping it off with that. A little pocket shovel. Yep. Uh, hold that. Yeah. Uh, what materials is it made out of? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, a standard shovel would have kind of an iron head and then, or steel head and then wooden handle. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's your trial now. There goes my shovel. <laughs> Let's see. Um, it could depend on the the roll. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to determine. Um, give me. Give me a reflexes check uh, because you're trying to make sure that you're able to like maneuver the shovel. You're pretty heat resistant, uh, but you don't want to like like risk burning the shovel or like getting like the shaft part. I'll say if you get anything lower than a yeah, if you get anything lower than a seven, that's about extreme. If you get anything lower than a five, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. What'd you get? What happens then? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was the number? Three. Three. Unfortunately, like, like you're getting in there, you're kind of like scraping the goo off, but like the chew get the chew jelly kind of like reacts and kind of like starts like creeping up the shovel and like starts like burning away and it falls out of your hand as like the tree jelly like falls into the uh the magma below you're shovelless unfortunately okay. Aww. well <laughs> it falls into the magma yep um how does it look like is it uh, is it basically just kaput uh the shovel yeah if I can reach, yeah, it's it's. I mean, you dropped it, like it's it's fallen ah, into shovel. <laughs> yeah, I'll let it go. It's stuck in the pudding now, so the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. So how am I gonna clear this chew jelly then? Ah. Uh... What if I just scrape it by hand at this point? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you can just. I'm not afraid of getting dirty. Uh, <laughs> give me an endurance check. Can do. 
Oh, that's a three, but plus two, five. So it stings. Uh, while you are, like, while, while Gorons are fairly fireproof, uh, lava and magma, it's quite more intense. Like, you don't see them just, like, straight up swimming in magma. That's why Magma Beard is so on a good. ship. So it's like, you know when you turn on the, sh- the shower and it's, like, piping hot and, like, you're trying to wash, but it's, like, melting your skin? That's what it feels like. Take half a heart of damage, but you're able to, like, scoop off the goop. Hurt so good. Job's done, though. Job is done. You're able to, like, skip it and <laughs> chuck it off. It sizzles in the magma below. <laughs> Job completed, but <laughs> at the cost of a shovel. And a tiny ouchie. Ouchie. Alrighty. Uh, oh, devil, we hardly knew thee. So the uh, the deck has been blow dried. The rudders are now gunk free. See, would you like I to? <laughs> would you like to take a stab at cooking for the captain? Yes. Um, no I think Corux. I don't think Corux eat. Do they? Uh, like, I th- or I mean, if anything, I don't think they eat what anybody else would. So That's what I want to Google it. I'm gonna say that they, um, they either photosynthesize or like, mm-hmm. yeah, because like things like mushrooms and like, berries, like they use those for like decorations and instruments. So like, yeah, they don't use them for. I want to say. Either way, he doesn't know how to cook, so he's just throwing rocks into a pan, which coincidentally is exactly what Magma Beard would like. Mm. Of course. So you're just chucking, uh, you're just chucking rocks in a pan. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Maisel would love them. He's making a crumble, is what he's doing. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. I I think I might have a little something in my bag, or I'll just go hungry. It's fine. Uh, give me a crafting check. Okay. Uh, I don't have crafting. Do I add my wisdom or no? Uh, is it? You have a plus. Great one. roll. I think it's what we did last time, wasn't it? But you've got a plus one in wisdom, don't you? <clears throat> oh no 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 no! Yeah, yeah, uh, just flat roll. Uh, Not yeah. craft. Um. Six. I mean, like, it's it's a pan. You're just like, I can imagine, like, like you've got your two like little stumps on, and like your full body is like trying to like shake these rocks, but it's just rocks in a pan. <laughs> uh, as like you're standing like on the on the deck, uh. You do start to smoke a little bit, like your woods, get, like your wooden body's getting like drier and drier. Uh, you could combust in any second. <laughs> oh, right. Um, let me grab that potion. How do I use this? I just pour it all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> what a feeling! <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. I feel like my my roots will um will absorb it. Congrats. You are now fire is uh let me rephrase that. You are now immune to combusting into flames while tra- traversing. So after you put it on, you do feel as if like you've got like this liquid gel over your body that's just keeping you cool. Mm. Um so yeah. Sweet. I just feel better. That's that's why I was feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> So uh, Magma Beard kind of walks like once he's kind of got the, the ship on like a straight course, he steps over towards the uh, o- over to the pan, like just grabs the rocks directly out of the pan, <laughs> just like starts munching on them. How is it? It's pretty good. 
I could use some rock salt, though. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but thank you. Professor, you want some? And he chucks you a rock. As I'm climbing over the edge of the, uh, back <laughs> up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try reflex. Wait, <laughs> Well, nine reflex. Yeah. You get right, dogs, but you catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, and then. Oh. I don't know. I, I don't know why that sequence of events just reminded me of like scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> Take my strong hand. <laughs> okay. Oh. So as you guys are just like doing your jobs across the ship and getting yourselves accustomed. Everybody roll me a perception check. Uh, cool. 11. 11? Yeah. See? 10. 10. Wow. Good, good going, guys. 7. 7. Okay. Uh, so, see, you got a 10. Mm-hmm. My got 11. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Uh, professor, you're still coming back from getting bopped on the head, so you're all you're coming back over the side of the ship, and you're a little bit dazed. Uh, Maisel and Otto, you guys are just kind of like conversing over what, uh, like, over the, the cooking, whatever just happened, until you suddenly hear the screeching of fire getting launched into the sky. You see multiple fireballs kind of almost as if it's like fireworks, but they're kind of not like falling down intentionally to hit the ship. They're just kind of almost like sparking up in the air until you hear a couple of Lizalfos on Zonai jet skis coming towards you with uh <laughs> uh, do, they have, do they have sunglasses? Are they bros? <laughs> Watched up there. Amazing. I don't have the space. <laughs> so if you look in the Discord, the there's the uh, the guys. <gasps> oh, how did I know? <laughs> I know you so well, Pat. <laughs> um. So yeah, this is one of the longest okay, secrets I've been keeping. The second I thought of it, I was just like, it's boring if just Lizalfos show up. Wait a second. What if they're on jet skis? <laughs> Bre- uh, Tears of the Kingdom made that a possibility. <laughs> I love well it. Well done. Okay. Combat is ensuing as the uh, the jet skis with the Lizalfos start rolling up. As per discussed in our practice sessions, uh, combat is going to be, uh, sorry, there's no initiative. Uh, you guys are just going whenever you like. Uh, just make sure you listen to everybody else if they want to go first or go a- after. One Lizalfos on like the jet ski kind of like going and he's like kind of like flaring his tongue. The other one's kind of got like a-, a bomb arrow ready to strike the ship. Uh, all right, have at it, guys. Uh, straight off the bat, uh, Maisel's gonna just shoot up into the sky, mm-hmm. uh, or as far up as high as she can be. So she's kind of like above the the, the douchebags, um, and gonna give it a go with my old um, bow and arrow here, because why not? Um, I'm also gonna activate my dive bomb uh, perk as well. So I deal an extra. Oh no, that's melee. Never mind. God damn it, I keep forgetting that. Um, either way, I'm gonna go up into the sky, just kind of pull myself away from the situation. I'm gonna use my bow and arrow on, uh, let's say, him because he's kind of closest, really. Um, so you're shooting that guy? Y- uh, yeah, shooting this guy here. Um, so I roll a d6 and then... Roll your, um, roll your 2d6 to see if you uh, yeah. make the attack. At four, so no. So you line up your arrow, you think you're about to make a shot, but you've just got the bow. You're not really mm-hmm. a skilled archer yet, so like you shoot the bow and it just... Like, the Zolfo's like quickly uh, moves out of the way and it 
stretches back its bow and launches its first bomb arrow into the ship and it explodes, doing a big bit of damage. Do any of us take any damage? It appears they're not looking to hit you guys. They're trying to sink the ship. Um, so it, it strikes into... I don't know why I'm pointing with my finger. You guys can't see that. Uh, <laughs> it, it launches its first arrow here. So kind of like just near where Professor Gabs uh, cleared the... The, uh, the choo-choo jelly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's kind of blasted there. It did a little bit of damage. You see uh, Magma Beard starting to freak out. Then he's just like, You rascals want to take my ship? You're going to have to take me too. And he like starts getting into getting into action. All Don't right. Do Don't jump. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt him. Are there any... Um, any any lads uh, with arrow uh, bomb arrows loaded right now? Uh, so this guy just used one, so he won't have one for the until the next turn or the next round. Uh, this guy is ready to ready to rock. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna hop over there to that other side. Quick, oh, did that work? Mm-hmm. And I want to use my my witch hand. Yeah. Artifact I found on uh, several years ago on a, a dig um, by by Druidal Valley. I'm going to use it. I discovered it, it actually has magical powers. <gasps> so, God. What does it do? I, I, hold, I hold it up. It's like a shriveled shriveled hand on a, a ring. I hold it up, and one of the fingers goes. <laughs> And a little spectral spectral hand shoots out and goes to where I'm directing it at the bomb. And I want to just hold it in place. <laughs> okay. So when he fires, when he fires, it just boom. Alrighty. Uh, do you need to do a check with your mage hand? I don't know because I used a I used a charge. Hmm. So if it was a spell, that'd be equivalent to spending MP. Yeah. Let's say... Uh, hmm. Because you're trying to, like, stop something from coming at you. Uh, your choice of either force or dexterity to kind of like keep it in place to stop this Lizalfos from uh get, getting what getting the shit the ship I think uh maybe something like Arcana would make sense yep which is actually putting me at a disadvantage because I don't have that skill <laughs> <laughs> but it does make more sense so I'm gonna try that uh seven Not too bad. Try Just real hard. Uh, seven is a success with a cost, if I'm right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm. See, we're getting the hang of it. So he's. Okay, so rather than the bomb staying in place, the Lysophos is kind of like wrestling with the hand and it kind of like pulls its arrow away. Uh, doesn't blow up in his face, but he seems very distracted with like this hand. Kind of be like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not touching, can't come at. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he seems very distracted. Um, that'll do. Okay, so Otto um, turns to Steed and goes, stay, and just flies up with his uh, little leaf umbrella. Well, it, it flew. Uh, and I'm going to shoot with my slingshot. I'm going to shoot some caltrops instead on the other, on, on these other ones. Yeah, cool. Can I 
a, a culture, like an area of effect, or do I have to aim at, at one in particular? Uh, so they are a. It is like an AOE. Uh, basically, if, if a creature was to move over that space, they would take damage. Um, but because you're shooting at, th- at them, like. Mm-hmm. You're effectively like. Yeah, let's let's say in like those yeah. in like those like four spaces, like some are going to go in the lava. That's fine, but like two set, okay. like two are going to like hit the two Lozafos if you hit. Okay, so that's uh, shoot. That's uh, yep. I think. All right. Ooh, that's a twelve. Yeah, Ooh. you uh, pull back your slingshot and you launch your caltrops at the two Lozalfos. Uh, mm-hmm. let, let me just get there. I feel like a 12 should be all of them hit. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's yeah. 12, right? Yeah, uh, so for some reason, the caltrops almost like skip across the water and like recoil and hit the uh, Lozalfos. <laughs> uh, let's. Although, what did damage the jet ski? Mm. Does it damage the battery on it? What were you aiming at? <laughs> I mean, if it's an AOE, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say uh, no. Is it a kind of a small blast? If all right, that's if, fair. If these things are okay to survive on lava, they can withstand getting hit with mm, a projectile. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so they all, they take like one damage each. Yeah. I, l- let's say because it was a 12, which is technically a crit, uh, double damage too. <laughs> okay. Yay! Yeah. Sharpshooter. I did it! <laughs> nice one, me, wee man. Me man? Wee man. Okay, so it is now their prep turn, so the Lizalfos are gonna move up a couple spaces on their jet ski to kind of get out of the way and the entire time you guys hear like uh, Hawaii Five-O music in the background as they're like oh, jet skiing off alrighty uh, top of the round um, seeing them get trying to like move off and like alright you're not getting away that easily um, so instead of using my bow and arrow she's gonna swoop up to here and kind of like swoop down with her magic boomerang and just try and lob one of them on the head with it mm-hmm. um, as a melee attack uh, my cardigan's getting in the way now uh, it's not her luck today she's got a five something something is something is just the heat the heat's getting to her for sure yeah, so you, you fly down to hit that one uh, as you swing your boomerang to like uh, to hit it, like like you say, like the almost like an amber kind of sparks up and kind of like stops you. But mm-hmm. in that blind moment, uh, Lilizalfos is able to take a swing at you. Yeah, it takes a swing at you with its tongue and it deals a uh, heart of damage as it kind of like uh, lobs at you with its tongue. Yep. Okay, cool. Oh, you bitch! Blam. Blam. To you too. That's a. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. All right. Then it's your turn. I turn to the other two on the other side, and this time I shoot Bekunats out of them. The two on the left. Mhm. Yep. These ones. Okay, that's uh, 10 plus 2, it's a 12. I know 12. Not a critical. Oh my god. Get uh, So the Deccan Nut like flies and like kind of like flash bangs them and they're both kind of like swerving as they're trying to like keep their composure uh let's roll me a d roll me a d4 to see if you have one handy mm-hmm. a 
one. One, okay. Y yeah, so it looks as if they're about to like steer themselves off of course, but they're able to kind of like point themselves as if they're going towards the ship. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, hope that did something. <laughs> that's that's all I can do. Okay, I don't know how much that's range. I don't think mm -hmm. any of that's range except for that witch hand. But I'm gonna try and move up closer. Wait, um, there's catapults in the ship, right? Where are they located? Uh, so you oh. see that black square where you are? Yeah. Uh, that's where that's where the catapult is. Uh, and like, is there? There is like, there's like rocks to be uh, launched. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go go ahead and load that real quick and try to figure out how to fire it off. So I've probably never used that before. Give me a quick. Oh, I I do have a mechanical um um proficiency. Okay, uh, from a quick glance, you look at this thing and usually there's like a button or there's like like a flint or like a like a, a mechanism that you turn to like release. This looks like a punching machine. Oh, yes. So, so from what it looks like, uh, Magma Beard loads up the cannon and punches the catapult to launch the boulders. What a, what a bro. It. Okay. Love so it. if there's enough t um, time in my turn, I'm going to load it and then hit it with my hammer instead. Yep. Uh, which ones are you hitting? Oh, to the left. Well, it's already kind of off course and pointing toward the ship. Yeah, cool. Uh, let's... Let's starboard. Yeah, so give Take me... Left. <laughs> Give me a force check. Good rolls today. The force threes. I do have the skill. Nice nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, so you're you're able to like wallop your hammer against the pad that launches a boulder towards the uh, to Lazalfos. Let's say the boulder was big enough to like take out like two squares, so like you're able to like whack them both. Uh, yeah. Let's see, how much damage does that do? It does two hearts of damage on them, but uh, oh, let's see if they can stay on the jet ski. Wow, twelve. They stay on. <laughs> <laughs> God. So you can take a hit too. They, they they took a big hit, so it actually pushes them back a little bit. But they're but they're like really holding on there. So at the end of everybody's turn, the Lazalfos uh, after getting smashed by uh, a big rock, uh, these guys are kind of get their eyesight back after being blinded and kind of like stop here and because the ship is also still technically going they kind of crash into the ship a little bit um let's see i don't think one of them doesn't make it one of them falls into the lava Oof. Ah! the the jet ski is kind of like getting like dragged along and this guy is able to climb up on board. Oh no. Oh yes. It's someone take time. the someone take the jet ski. Do it. <laughs> um then these guys are gonna come up here. Uh this guy has a bomb again. And that's a success. Yeah, two successes. So this guy jumps up here. There. And oh, this, him. And this Sorry, guy. And this I'm annoyed guy by him. Goes here. Top of the round. Mm. Oh, can I go first for this one? 
Yeah, go ahead. I'm still trying to plan what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to pop into ball mode real quick. Because, uh, not only is he a professor of archaeology, but Gabs is also a fan of bowling. Uh, go on rock bowling. Oh my god. And they're all set up nicely in a row. Oh my god. <laughs> so he cannot resist. And just gonna go for it. Just can charge. I can I assist you with this? How by gust? Yeah. <laughs> I just look back at you. I say, remember that gust jar? I pal, let's do this. Takes our little handy Dyson. <laughs> just... <laughs> okay, let's see how this works because what's what's the what's the ball attack? What look? What's the thing behind it? There's no. It's improvised. Improvised. Okay. So how you consider um, speed and the, the damage of improvised weapons, which can be anywhere from one to like D6. Yeah. Maybe D8 if it's huge, but it's not going to be D8. Okay. Uh, you can get these two in a perfect line, but I will say if you get a two on this, uh, if you get a two on this, <laughs> you hit these stairs and you get launched. If you, if you get these guys with like, basically, if you get anything, a seven to nine, you hit these guys, but you kind of hang off the edge. Anything past that, they jump out of the way. You go straight in the lava. Especially if she's like blasting you from. Especially if she's p assisting with that. <laughs> Blowing some air up your ass. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I think either way, I win. And the wind, wind beneath his wings. <laughs> Are we doing any uh, skill for that, or is it like a general? Uh, what's your, what's your case? Like, what's your best skill? Because this is <laughs> improvised. Do you need me to roll anything for the gust as well for the? Uh, Bellows jar. Um, Dexterity. <laughs> let's say. Let's say you you using your gust jar gives him a plus two. Okay. Cool. Uh, the best I could think is um, either force or drive, maybe. Yeah, could, vehicle, but let's say let let's say oh it's not a I was thinking drive as in like yeah false of walls yeah, motivation gusto yeah. gusto yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> this, this takes a lot I of was balls thinking literally do. driving but um let's well, go courage uh, uh, yeah yeah let's go courage okay. He's got Miracle. drive. He's got power. Not a good sign. <laughs> well, we got five. So how'd that gust? Pl plus, plus two <laughs> plus with two. a gust. It's nothing. Seven? Is it seven success succeeds, doesn't it? Yeah, you said that if you got seven, well then it pushes them over. But you're clinging to to life to do your life at the edge, isn't it? Yeah. But if you got anything below that, then you yeet yourself overboard. Uh, I have a five. So five, so, so five plus the two from the gust jar. Uh, okay. So you get in ball form, you like wind up like Sonic the Hedgehog, you launch, you kind of like, you kind of jump up over like like the steps and you, you're you off balance, but you knock into the Zolfos like after like uh, Maze Alec redirects you with like the gust jar. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a little bit too much as you kind of get launched over the side and you're kind of like holding on to the, the, the edge of the ship. Um, is there damage from your ball form? Recall it's improvised. Uh, let's say for me or for not for me, but for them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, roll me a d6. <laughs> what do you get? <laughs> they take one damage. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, I'll be f- I'll, I'll be fair. L- that's uh, one heart. So, so in addition to that, because they did just get knocked by a giant boulder, uh, they do get shoved aside. So he kind of goes there. He goes there. You're. Wait, I just realized I would be over here if I if I was uh, Gust in his butt. One step closer to the edge, Andrew, and you're about to break. Now I'm about to break. About to break. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so see. the one lad's on the edge too. Yeah. Um. I see. Now, now, Steed, and Steed. Wait, how much is? All oh, right, he has the bunny ears, so that's fine. He can go anywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have. Steed, go bite this guy. This guy. There mm-hmm. we go. Um, and uh, come on. There we go. And yeah, I did try to basically make it lose its grip so that it uh, it falls. Mm-hmm. Um, what role would it be? I mean, I guess it doesn't have uh, anything. Yeah, just roll f- a flat uh, 2d6. Mm. Well, that's a 10. Hey. Okay. You're rolling good tonight. Yeah. yeah. So you're able to, or the dog is able to, like, run up and bite. Uh, he does lose his balance, uh, but he's, like, still, like, hanging on there. It, how much damage does the bite do? One heart. God damn. And then uh, Otto goes, good boy, and what? flies a little bit closer and just shoots Caltrops at these other two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's a seven. Success, but a cost. Mm hmm. So. You load up your uh, color traps and the slingshot. You, you launch them in that area, uh, going by the same rules as before. Because I, I mentioned four by four, or sorry, two by two. Uh, it does hit Gabe. Uh, so Gabe takes what? Is it one heart or half a heart? One heart. One heart. Actually, wait. No, Gabe is heavy. I have right. armor as well. Natural uh, armor. Oh, so that's it's a D four for heavy units. So and that's a four. <laughs> so that's Wait, four hearts of damage. Is, is that is that if he steps on it though? Yeah. Yeah, but like we're do, we're saying that it's a projectile. Hmm. Sure. Would it be half a heart maybe? So it'd be two two hearts instead. Yeah, because it says D four hearts damage to anyone heavy. If you step on it. Yeah. Because like mm-hmm. the implication is if like if if this big guy was standing on it and then fell, that would be where, where that comes from. Uh, as opposed to you're using it as if okay. you're shooting like a like a, an arrow essentially. Mm-hmm. So then just the normal one heart of damage. Gave the take half a heart. I have, <laughs> I have two points of armor. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so it would negate that. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. No damage. It's but a fresh wound. Lizalfos kind of get like geared up and start hopping along. Uh, they they take out more bombs. Uh, they have no arrows because like they're in close range. But this guy is gonna kind of move here. This guy is moving here, and this guy is struggling because of that goddamn dog. And mm-hmm. I forgot Magma Beard hasn't done anything yet, so he's going to run. Uh, well, technically he has to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to get there, and he's going to look at this guy, and he's going to wind up for a punch. Oh. He hits him. But there's a cost. Yeah, so you see that he, like, uh, 
like winds up and like punches Los Losalfos. Losalfos drops the bombs and they kind of like roll and they're like kind of like they could blow on any second. Mm -hmm. Gust. <laughs> so gust uh, that bitch. <laughs> top of the round. You want to you want to gust that bitch? <laughs> yeah. That bitch don't have any bombs anymore. They're on the ground. Uh, well, can I can I can I gust the bombs then? You sure can. <laughs> Grab the bombs with the gust jar and shoot it. Oh, little mini cannonball. Cannon, like, uh, what's it called? Bazooka. <laughs> Bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Good let's <laughs> let's say. It's going to be, first of all, a dexterity check to see if you can, like, scoop it up in the jar. Well, can I use my catch reaction? Is that possible? Because if I roll a reflex, then... Oh, it, well, it's not thrown or it, shot at me, was it? He so. dropped it on the ground. Okay. It's ready to blow. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, okay, so a dex check then, yeah? Okay. Hi, uh, hi. I think I'm getting too caught up on the sauce. So, skipping it up and skipping it up and launching it, I would deem that as two actions. I'm getting caught up on the sauce. <laughs> okay. Rule of cool. It's very cool, but I'm like. Hmm. Can I not? Can I not just use my gust jar just to suck it up from afar, or I get run up to go up to it and go? <laughs> So if you sucked it up in the jar, there's a potential that it's going to blow up in the jar. Like it's oh, no. it's ready to blow. Uh, I will say um, you can just gust it off the edge of the ship. You can do that. Remember, your boomerang is a gale boomerang, so you can use that to like try and grab the bombs to fling them off the ship. Can I do that with my boomerang? OK. Yeah. That's, I'll do that then. That's how that's how your gust and the other spell works. You have to use your boomerang to use oh, it. Oh yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, what would you like me to roll for that then? Um, you've mentioned reflexes before. That seems like pretty reflexual. Reflexual. Yep. Uh, okay. So what is my? Ah, okay. Cool. It's courage anyway. Uh, eight. Ten. Ten. So. You swing, swing the boomerang. It kind of hovers through the air for it first, and then a slight tornado kind of starts building up, and it's able to like swap up. It swaps up the two bombs, and it's able to carry them off. And the wind like disperses, uh, and the bombs fall into the lava. Boom, boom. Uh, yep, boomerang comes back. You grab it. Does that revert it? Great. Yay! I did a thing! Yay! Yay. Oh wait, we still got people HP. to kill, haven't we? The ship does have HP. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> got it. I, so I guess I'm gonna climb back up because I'm hanging, I'm dangling. Mm -hmm. So I'll try climb. Not bad. Nine. Okay. I would say that uses your movement. It doesn't use an action. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case... In that case, I'll bring out that witch hand again. Because mm -hmm. like, I'm too far away. But I'll, I'll try to... To push that... The one lad off the edge there by the dog. By <laughs> steed. <laughs> by mage hand. Yeah. Just a little like, ha. <laughs> Just push straight forward. Okay, uh, give me that Arcana check. Good. Whoa, seven. Yeah, cool. So Lahan just kind of like appears. It goes, <laughs> <laughs> pushes him into the lava. Oh, even better. I, I grabbed, I grab his finger. Was he hanging off the edge, or was he just staying there? Uh, he was kind of like. Uh, he was kind of like just standing there, but like kind of like taken aback the fact that a dog just bit him. Yeah. Yeah, the full on like backhand slap with that mage hand. 
fetch slaps. Uh, Whoa. As, as he, like, almost like Hans Gruber falls, style falls into the lava, uh, like, he lets go of, like, one bomb, and the bomb is beside Otto. Uh-oh. Protect him at all costs. Otto or, or Steed? Oh, so, uh, uh, Steed. Okay. How much is it? It hasn't exploded. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the same as uh, with my, like, the bomb is on the ground. It's red. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I use uh, my coral leaf to blow it away? Yes. So I'd like to fly on the other side. And then I guess just position myself as if like the propeller is just doing a gust <laughs> um, and try and direct it as this other guy if possible otherwise just off the ship okay so you, you want to roll the bomb to blow up that guy yeah. Yeah. I mean, in that direction. Yeah. Uh, if it goes on that guy, it could. Otherwise, it goes off the ship. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what skill do you think would uh, work best for that? Um, would it be um, performance? <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to see. <laughs> how, His how, best skill. He's got a lot of head of air. <laughs> is it because, see, is it because you're trying I mean, your best? Just, I'm just, it is uh, a show to look. <laughs> you know what? Um, you know what? You're putting on a performance. Dexterity. Uh, dexterity? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a uh, four. A five, sorry. Okay. Let's deal. Uh, so you're spinning your little Korok leaf, and do you with, do you like the heat waves and stuff? It's just not picking up the air. Okay. You can't I spin it. Could be really okay. cruel. You can't spin it fast enough. Okay, cool. That's all right. So uh, I feel like uh, Steed is gonna just grab it in his mouth and just throw it off. Of the ship, then. <laughs> okay, dog. <laughs> it's just a ball, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fetch. He's playing fetch with um with his owner instead of. <laughs> <laughs> Brings it back to a him. tiny wooden man. Go catch the ball. <laughs> okay, what what would that be? <laughs> no, it's Steve, so I'll just do it. Back. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> it's a oh. flea. All there is is just a jaw See, left. See, <laughs> are you going to make me blow up a dog? <laughs> it's a fluff another. Are you, you going to kill a dog? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this will be on the internet. Uh, uh, yep. just, just terms and conditions, no dog was harmed. In no dogs were harmed. <laughs> That's imaginary. It's... You didn't get to pet him. <laughs> um, okay. Has everybody had their turns? Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah. you had your turn, Andrew, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, describe why you killed a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, the bomb that's in front of Otto and Steed, as well as the other Lizalfos. Uh, Wasn't lava, right? Oh, was that the one that was pushed in? Yes, yeah. it, it was. It was correct. So he he's he is dead. I'll change that in a second. So bomb drops on the ground. It kabooms, dealing three hearts of damage to Otto, Steed, and the ship. I'm flying. Oof. Uh, is is it a big thing? Uh, big enough to get me in the air? Yeah. Um. Is it an AOE though? It's an AOE. It, it would be an AOE. But you were, you would have had to have get gotten low. To mm, that's true. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Shorty got low. <laughs> so low. Shorty got low. Uh, throw to the do. Yeah, so three hearts damaged. Yeah, and the ship also takes uh, that damage as well. Okay, so as uh, as that bomb goes off, you guys notice that the ship is coming to a halt. It stops oh. sailing. Uh, Magma yeah. Beard gets a little bit more uh, panicked. He's like, oh, not the ship, anything but the ship. And he looks around uh, and he's like, he looks at the other two Lazalfos and he says to you guys, I've got one plan left. If the ship's going down, I'm going down with it. You complete the mission. Everybody, load into the cannon. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's two jet skis. Surely we can fit. It's just a ship. Well, it's a grandpa ship. It's just too bad. <laughs> what? We can do it. I can fly. I, I can also fly. Yeah, so uh, Magma Beard is going to try and punch that guy in front of him. He does. Uh, killing that guy. Oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> He's yeah. angry, but his ship's not sailing anymore. So I believe just to clean up the map. This guy is in the lava. This guy is R.A.P. But I'll make it a little bit more R.A.P. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's just that guy. He, he 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 looking a little bit scared. Not gonna lie. All right. Next up. You got uh, have I got time? Would I? Uh, well, if not, it's fine. Uh, would I have had time to attach a bacoblin horn onto one of my arrows, or even? Sure. <laughs> Let's say yes. Okay. Um, seeing this guy again, a wee bit panicked, and <laughs> really trying not to say what I want to say. Say it. Uh, she's gonna pull an arrow from her quiver, quickly wrap it up with the horn, aim at the Lizalfos and say, time to get horny. There it is. I had to do it. There it is. The, the uh, certified Myrit the Pirate sexual quip, everybody. I had to have one. I wasn't gonna. I had to have one. Um, so... I am rolling really shit at the moment. Got a five. So five. It, yeah. So he dips out of the way. You, you see, you hear the arrow kind of like chink and uh, scratch behind him. Uh, he inhales. So he, he inhales and <laughs> uh, spits a fireball right at you. Um, <laughs> bang. Dealing two hearts of damage. damage. Okay. Okay. Motherfucker. Fire damage, if that's anything. But like your your fellers are kind of like ampering and ain't looking so hot. Singing up. Yep. Maybe I look so hot. I'm on fire, baby. <laughs> hey. Um. Sorry. So, auto wheel just go down and Riz Rats is uh, whatever he's <laughs> things uh, he's Red leads down, right? uh, yeah <laughs> and he'll just pick up his pan fluid oh no Steve I'm so sorry do 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 no sorry uh, how did it go um, whatever <laughs> the song of healing <laughs> no no <laughs> um, so yeah just song of healing and that's a d4 plus two so it, steed is fully healed again uh and then steed is gonna uh run to this other guy and try to push him into jesus, the lava jesus dog <laughs> <laughs> this guy does not like like his life, does he? He doesn't value his life at all. 
He's just a dog. He doesn't understand. The, <laughs> you've, you've, he certainly feels that way if you think he's just a dog. You've trained this dog, see? <laughs> he actually just found me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't own the dog. The dog owns you. <laughs> exactly. Is, is it one of the random dogs that you find at night at Hyrule's, uh, Hyrule Castle? Uh, uh, la, la, la. Uh, the Hyrule Castle grounds, you know, in Ocarina. Is it maybe one of those weird dogs? <laughs> yeah. Pushing them. Oh, that would be... It's the dog. I keep forgetting. I don't add anything to the dog. Uh, that's a seven. Seven. Okay. So, once again, you push the dog. Or, sorry, you push the guy. Uh, he drops a bomb, but he is, like, off balance. Like, he, like he's able to kind of, like blizzard grab onto the edge of the the edge of the ship mm -hmm. Ooh, not for long yeah I can't like move him back without him actually being in the lava so let's just pretend he's like hanging on the edge yeah well not for long I'm gonna run up well, it's not even that far it's only a step I'm oh. just gonna straight up punt him just <laughs> with my tiny little groin legs <laughs> Kick him. Uh, the unarmed attack. It's not much, but could hit. Um, maybe a force. Yeah. Roll. Oh, I'm getting nine a lot today. Nine. Not bad. Yeah. So you you punt this guy Ooh. right in the face. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you, you successfully kick him into lava. Just him under the chin. <laughs> so, Lazophos. KO! KO. Uh, the Lazophos are all finito. Although, that one dropped the bomb. Mm. You guys uh. use all your actions, right? <laughs> all our what? You guys all use our actions. All, yeah. Yeah. The dog has a guard reaction. <laughs> it's a bomb, well, see? It's a bomb. <laughs> well, my can, I use my, a... can I use my can I use my catch reaction? It's on the grind. It's not thrown at you. <laughs> yeah, I rolled it. Oh, my, my, turn, my turn still has a, uh, a consequence, so that's got to be it. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, so the bomb the bomb uh, goes off. Uh, I'm guessing it's like here I'm guessing yeah it's where it is so the dog takes uh, one heart of damage okay. okay the ship comes to like a halt uh, it's no longer sailing it's been quite badly damaged uh, magma beard is quite distraught uh, but he, he like turns to every one of you and says okay you mentioned about those jet skis down below. You can take them, ride them straight into the volcano. Another way. And he looks at uh, Maisel. Hey. I can launch you guys up to the top of the volcano. You could fall in. You've done it before. You could do it again. That's what I would do. If you want to take the easy way with the Zonai jet skis there, be my guest. All I know is I have to stay here and fix the ship. Well, I mean, I know personally, I do kind of miss the rush of diving, you know. So that's what I would say. Go for the rush of the... <laughs> but we've got to think about the wee one, so... Uh, of course, That's why you guys can fly. I I can also fly. Uh, it, my dog is another matter, but we can carry him. <laughs> a dog and a catapult? Jesus Christ! That's your choice. Like you, you made this <laughs> in a volcano, right? <laughs> Well, what's the quicker way? Or rather, what's the safer way? That's probably the best thing to ask, because we've got to think of the little one. And, well, more so thoughts of the little one, the hairy one. So. Well, the, the, the safest way would have been me 
sailing you guys straight in, but unfortunately, I need to stay behind to fix the ship. Those Zonai jet skis are still there. Mm. First thing about the jet ski. I know how to... I have mechanical proficiency, so... So, would I probably recommend that you drive one, I drive the other, or have... Well, unless Otto, if you want to sit on steed while you're steering. There's always that option. Don't know what your eyesight's like. Well, I know. I I, I can fly as well, but we don't want to put this other jet ski to to, to waste, do we? That's that's the one the dog was on. (laughs) 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 Do you think we'll need it? Maybe. If one breaks, we can use the other. All right, sure. I'm also just greedy. I can't help it. So you guys are taking the jet skis? Yeah, I was going to ask. I'm guessing it would only fit Um, two of us on each anyway, wouldn't it? Well, Maisel, could you be able to pick Steed up? Or is he too heavy for you? I could give it a go. I stick the challenge into the door. (laughs) (laughs) And try and lift it on. I hope I don't drop oh. the dog. Actually, I want, I want to try Lava. something. <laughs> I want to try something. Let me let me remember how it goes. Um, I want to try and sing bird uh, play bird song on my pad flute. And if I if I get a ten or higher, I like a big bird suddenly comes down, and we can fly on that. Oh, amazing. I don't. It's fine. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I fucking suspense it's, scene. <laughs> it's just lovely. a nice real song. This is very nice. How is this meant to help, Otto? <laughs> just to lift their moods. <laughs> oh, thank you for the moral support. <laughs> Do any other birds come instead? A couple of sparrows. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like a secondary effect. See that like birds come. Uh, the the primary effect is I can I'm able to talk to birds. Ah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand you better. I can understand uh, you. Hey, I know it's a bit strong, eh, pal? <laughs> Or rather, if if Otto was here, we'd be like, oh, I know, it's just, it's been really hard to understand me, hasn't it? So, uh, so Magma Beard uh, goes over the sides. He's able to, like, grab some, like, the, he's able to grab, like, the jet skis and, like, kind of pull them up and help you guys kind of get them ready to go off into lava and make your way towards the cavern. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is he going to help us get Steed in, or am I actually going to do the whole giant eagle thing and try and pull him in? Uh, like I mean, there's two of them. P- the professor can go on one. Uh huh. I would assume mm. Maisel can either fly or go on the other. Otto can also fly, fly or ride him on, and then the dog can just be a passenger. Yeah. Unless. You roll insanely well for the dog to have motor skills. <laughs> Listen, I- I'm for it. Fuck. It's like an Uncali Valley situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Steve, uh, show them what you can do. <laughs> it's a five. <laughs> he sniffs it. <laughs> That's it. That's... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You, you get my? That's, that's fucking dog. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, so you guys load up the two jet skis. Uh, you make your way through the lava. Uh, you kind of hear uh, Magma Beard uh, kind of shout as you guys are going off in the distance. He just gives you a big thumbs up and a slit as you guys ride off into the magma escape. 
Uh, I think that's where we're going to call it for the first session. Thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, appreciate it. Stick around for part two. Stick around for part two. Yo, yo, yo.